This tutorial for Pathfinder's Adventures actually took place over on twitch.tv slash instant replay live where I stream every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time zone. Uh, if you find this interesting and would love to see more playthroughs of the game, uh, then make sure you go over there and follow the channel. Make sure you follow twitch.tv slash instant replay live. So that you can catch me streaming every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Time Zone, as well as all the other streams, all the other uh, different streamers that we have on the channel. Uh, this is just going to cover the tutorials, going to explain the mechanics of the game and how it works. I have a bunch of things unlocked in the game, and if I'm not mistaken, most of it is just cosmetic stuff. It's mostly just cosmetic, so it's not going to affect gameplay. Uh, recommended party size three or four. You can make a party of one to six characters to take through the rise of the Rune Lords campaign. Parties with larger numbers of characters have may have many options when dealing with an encounter, but each character may not get as many turns to act. Parties with a small number of characters have limited options, but each character will get many turns to attack. Okay. So the baseline of the game is that you have about 30 turns. You have about 30 turns to complete each level, complete each mission. Uh that turn count does not increase with more characters so if you're playing with one character obviously that one character is going to take all 30 turns but if you're playing with two people each person will have about 15 turns you're playing with three each person will have 10 turns and so on and so forth i believe you can go all the oh yeah i said we go all the way to six uh because we're doing a one person playthrough a single player playthrough i'm only going to be using one character it actually gets a little bit confusing for me to use more than one character okay so like I said, I've been playing this game a lot on the iPad in which you don't have to buy the game. It's a free-to-play game, but you only come with so much stuff unlocked. I believe it's actually just this character, Maricel and Kyra, that you start unlocked with. And then you unlock everyone else through completing goals and such. Uh, as such, I'm only familiar with these two. And I know that Maricel can handle the game on her own. Or at least as much as I played on my own. On her own. Um... I know Kyra is a cleric. She needs other characters. She, she absolutely cannot play this game by herself. But Mauricio is a rogue, and rogues can fend for themselves. Okay, let me explain this screen a little bit. Okay, so there's the six classic... There's the six classic... Uh, uh, RPG traits. There's strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. More or less, these will be what allow our characters to do things. Now... Uh, the number beside it so for example strength d8 that means whenever you do a roll that includes your strength or requires your strength you'll roll a d8 a d8 is an eight-sided die it's an eight-sided die let me see do i have my dice on my why do i never have my dice on my desk anymore that's where i need them most uh, uh, uh an eight-sided die i believe has eight triangular sides on it i believe that's what an eight-sided die is and they're all marked one through eight uh, you want you want a big number. You want the bigger numbers for this game, for the most part. Uh, you want to roll an eight. That'll give you eight points in your strength, and then whatever modifiers are available. There's different forms of modifiers. For example, this plus one, plus two, plus three. As our characters get stronger, you can increase some of the some of the traits, some of the skills. So then it'd be if you do a D eight and you get plus one as you, one of your increases. Then let's say you roll an eight. You'll get that one bonus point automatically. So it'll be an 8 and then it'll go to a 9. Uh, there's Dexterity. This is a D12. That's a 12-sided die. Like I said, you want you want bigger numbers. So our our rogue, Mariciel, our, our elf rogue, rogue elf, one of those two, uh, she specializes in Dexterity. She's pretty good in strength, but then everything else, not so hot. So pretty much we want to go in. We want to go in hard combat with this character. Hard combat. Uh, like I said, we're going to do Mauricio. Uh Let's see. Do I have alternate costumes? No, I don't. Oh, these, these are somewhat different builds. Okay. So let me explain this bottom row right here for dexterity. So if we do a dexterity roll, that's mostly something like uh, using certain tools, using certain weapons. We're going to roll a d12. But if we're actually using a tool that will allow us to disable something, and I'll explain what we can disable. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to roll our dexterity, but then we're going to get a bonus two points. That's what this means down here. Same thing goes with stealth. Being If we want to do something and be stealthy about it, we roll the dexterity, we roll the d12, and we get two points. And then the same thing goes for acrobatics. 
All right. That's more or less straightforward. Uh, they all have different powers. They have to have a certain amount of cards in their hand or else they'll lose. Um, for Mauricio, at the end of the turn, you have to have at least five. I'm sorry. You have to have five cards in your hand. No more, no less. If you have less than that at the end of the turn, I think you lose. I'm pretty sure you lose. Uh, we can use light armor, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have an ability called hide. If we run into something and instead we don't think we can fight it, we can use hide and that will let us avoid it for one turn. Uh, sneak attack will let us throw away a card to get extra dice. I'll explain all of that. This game's got its own, it's got its own language about it and it's just understanding the language. Let's see, we need a nickname for our elf. We need a nickname for our female elf rogue. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her the name jade for the i'm gonna i'm gonna write it correctly i'm gonna give her the name jade for that jewel atop her head this is jade the female elf rogue all right like i said we're only gonna do one character we're only gonna do one character and to make it a little bit easier to play a little bit easier as you add more characters, you actually have more enemies to fight. So with just one character to play as, we're only fighting, um, we're only gonna fight three enemies in each in each given level. Okay, so this is the level select screen, more or less. This is our first level here, Brigand Doom. We'll be doing Brigand Doom. Uh, each level has different levels of difficulty. At first, you can only do the first level. You can select that here. So it's normal difficulty for the first level. Uh, these are just things that you earn based on uh, completing it. It increases with difficulty. So next would be heroic. To get heroic, though, you have to defeat normal. And then for legendary, you have to defeat heroic. All right. Uh, there's one village. Uh, excuse me. There's one villain. There's some henchmen, and then we have bonuses for this scenario. I'm going to jump in, and then I can explain it. The first level is actually really easy to explain it for. Sandpoint. Well, I've been in worse places. On the upside, easy money can often be made in these backwater holes. You there. You look equipped and able. I can't get a supply shipment past the waterfront these days. That brigand, Jubriel Vishiki, and his thugs are robbing honest folks in the streets. Our incompetent sheriff can't seem to do a thing about it. Assuming you have the coin, happy to do business with you. If I get to bloody my daggers, all the better. All right, so we're going to hop into the very first level. Okay, so during the scenario, I'll explain this in a second. If a monster's power causes you to recharge one or more cards, do so, then draw the same number of cards you recharged. So this is our villain. This is the gent that we have to defeat. Jubral Vishki. Um, combat. It says he has a combat of 10. That means whenever we roll the dice, we'll have to amass 10 points or more. If you remember, our, our strength was 8. It was a D8. So that means we're going to roll an eight-sided die. But by itself, an eight-sided die can't beat Drew Brawl. We need ten points. So we're going to have to add in some weapons and some other tools and things that will help us to defeat Drew Brawl Vishki. If you look right here, it says this type is a monster card. He is a monster. Specifically, he's a villain. Specifically, he's a villain. That's somewhat important. And then he's got henchmen. It looks like he has two henchmen. They're bandits. To defeat the... Bandits, we have to roll an eight. I'm sorry, we have to amass eight points for our combat roll. Uh, that's a little bit more feasible with an eight-sided die. It's hard, but it's a little bit more feasible. Uh, he is a monster as well, or the bandit is a monster as well, but specifically it's a henchman. It's not the main bad guy. It's just a bad guy. All right, so those three cards, the villain and the two henchmen, are going to be shuffled into the three different locations that we can travel to uh, for this level. Uh, this one here is the woods. This one here is the farmhouse. And this is the waterfront. We can decide to start at whichever one we want to. We can start at any one of the three places. But each place has its own qualities about it. I'm going to go back to the woods real quick. If we take a look at the left side, we can see the different types of cars that are available in this location. There's monsters, which are not villains or henchmen. So on top of the villain or the henchman, 
there's four other monsters here. Each of the villains... The villain and each of the henchmen have been shuffled randomly and spread apart between these three. We want to defeat either the henchman or the villain here, and we can shut down the location early. Uh, like I said, on top of that, there's four monsters. I believe this is armor. I believe the yellows. Are, oh no, sorry, the yellow is are things like traps. The yellows are things like traps, or I forget what they're actually called. It could be called barrier. There's one weapon here. There's no spells. There's no armor. There's two potions or two items. There's no allies. There's no other people that can help us in our level, in our, in our attempt to beat this level. And there's no blessings. Blessings are more or less gifts from the gods. Uh, the blessings will often give us extra dice to roll or special abilities. They're, they're actually what's going to help us. And then there's one question mark. I forget what the question mark is. I think the question mark might be whether it's the villain or the henchman. There's one of them here. So at this location, undefeated monsters other than villains or henchmen are banished. So if we run into one of these four monsters and we don't defeat it, then we will be, it will be banished. It will be removed from the game. Uh, we don't have to worry about it coming back. Normally, if you don't defeat a monster, it gets shuffled back into the deck uh, when closing. Succeed at Wisdom or Survival 6 check. I'll explain that when we get there. That's actually going to be a little bit rough for us, not going to lie. So we might not start at the woods. Let's check out the farmhouse. The farmhouse has pretty similar numbers. Pretty similar numbers when it comes to the woods. I'll compare the two real quick. Uh, there's one more item. There's one more ally. There's one less barrier and there's one less monster. At this location, when an ally will be discarded, it is buried instead. Okay, so there's three different ways to get rid of cards. There's discarded, buried, and banished. Discarded means it goes to your discard pile. There's still the potential to get it back while we play this level this time. Buried means it's discarded, but we can't get it back for the rest of the level. But it will be in our deck for later on. It will still be in our deck later on. So if we go to another level, there's the potential to get that uh, item back or get that card back. And then Banished, which is what we saw for uh, the woods. Banished is right here. Banished means that card doesn't exist anymore. It won't be in our deck in the next game that we play. There's no way to get it back this game. And for us to get it back, we have to earn it back. We have to earn that card back. Uh, when closing, summon and defeat a random monster. The farmhouse might actually be a pretty good place to start because we're all about combat. We're all about combat. Waterfront. At this location, when using a weapon, subtract one from each die rolled. After your exploration, you may discard two cards to explore again. Okay, so typically we're going to do a lot of combat. We have to defeat the henchman and the villain. Uh, but every time we add another die... Every time we add another die for our rolls, for our combat rolls, or our weapon rolls, we take one point away. That's not good. We're going to start the farmhouse. I'm going to drag my character there so that we know that we're starting at the farmhouse, and then we'll actually begin with the meat of the game. This is Sandpoint, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's see. There's a lot of things that are different on this screen. On the left side, though, you can still see the qualities, the, the different abilities, the effects for the location that we're at, Farmhouse. You can still see that if we would discard an ally, it would be buried instead. So this is my discard pile here on the bottom left of the screen. This is my discard pile here. Um, you can see that there's no cards in it. And this is my buried pile here. You can see that there's no cards here. Remember, if a card is discarded, there's, there's a potential for us to get it back over the course of this run. But if it's buried for the rest of the level, we won't be able to get it back. We will not be able to get it back. We'll have it for the next, next level that we take on, but for this level, it's not there. Um, let's see. These cards down here are my hand. These cards down here are my hand. I can explain them all from left to right. This card here is a blessing of the gods. Uh, this is just a very generic blessing. Each, each different god within the game imbues their own blessing. Uh, this one is just very generic. If I throw this card away, uh, I can add one extra die to any check. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, I can also throw this card away to explore a location. You see how this bit here is glowing? It's because it wants me to check the top card of the farmhouse location deck. That's called exploring. So, I oh, every turn you explore once. Every turn you explore once, that's what this blue symbol at the top right means. It's time for you to explore. 
But after that first explore, if I want to explore again, I can use the blessing of the gods. I can discard it to explore once more. Remember, I said we only have 30 turns. That's marked by this number here. This is our turn counter. Uh, once this hits zero, if I try to do my next turn, it's game over. So I want to explore as many times as possible. I'm only, I'm only allowed to explore once a turn unless I throw away a blessing that allows me to do so. This is an item. I, it has different it has different qualities about it. So, for example, this is liquid, this is alchemical, and this is also basic. Uh, these qualities matter a lot later in the game. Uh, it has ability to banish this card to choose. Excuse me, banish this card and choose a character at your location to automatically succeed at a non-combat perception check. So, if I ever do something that says check to acquire, and it has perception here in the top right corner of the card, I can throw this card away to do it. And succeed. I don't have to worry about rolling any dice or anything like that. This is a burglar. This guy is an ally. You can see that in the bottom in this corner right here. Uh, I can use. I can recharge this card. To recharge a card, that means to put it back in your deck. That is sometimes good, sometimes bad. Remember, I have to have at least five cards in my hand at the end of each turn, or I lose. So naturally, I'm gonna want more cards in my deck. But sometimes you don't want to put too many different, too many wild cards in your deck. It won't help you. You won't be able to plan. Uh, recharge this card to add one D10. So when it has a number before a D and a number, let's see. The D and the number tells you what, how many sides are on that die. So this will add uh, a 10-sided die. And then the number before D10 tells you how many of those dice. So this will add one D10, one die that has 10 sides to it. Recharge this card to add one D10 to your disable or stealth check or your check to defeat a barrier. If you fail to acquire this card, discard a weapon or an item. So this effect doesn't matter anymore because we already have it in our hand. And then we have another blessing of the gods. Uh, there's multiples of many cards in this game. And then we have a dagger. That is our very first weapon. It's not a bad weapon. It's not a bad weapon. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus D4. What does that mean? Okay, so I said before how our character has different range, uh, sorry, different skills. Let me take a look one more time. What was that? It wants our dexterity or our range skill. So we have dexterity. Range wouldn't be one of these six main abilities. It would actually be a sub ability or a sub skill. And I believe it would be for dexterity. So the card dagger wants us to use our dexterity. So we'll do a D12. We'll roll a D12 if we equip our dagger for the turn. So if we equip our dagger, we'll, we'll roll a D12, and then we'll also get one D4. You may additionally recharge this card to add another one D4. So when we equip this card, it'll stay in our hand. But if instead of equipping it, we recharge it, we'll get a bonus D4, but we won't have this card anymore. Instead, we'll draw the top card of the deck. Might be a little bit confusing. Might be a little bit confusing. I'll show you. I'll show you everything in action. I'll show you everything in action. This thing is telling us what we need to do for our turn. We need to explore. So I'll draw the top card of the farmhouse location deck. And it's a bandit. It's a bandit. Okay, so I can, because of who I am, I can choose to either fight it or I can evade this card. If I evade it, he's going to go back to the top of the deck and then we'll continue with the rest of our turn. Uh, I'd rather fight the bandit. I'd rather fight the bandit. We don't really have a problem with fighting the bandit. We should be able to take him on. So I'm going to click the, the sword over here. That means let's fight this fool. Okay. The ability for the bandit. And also remember, this guy, he's not our... Is he, is he our villain? I'm sorry, our henchman? I believe he's a henchman. Yes, he's a henchman. Yeah, okay. So we're already starting off on a good note. His ability says uh, the difficulty to defeat this this guy is increased by the scenario's adventure deck number. This scenario is a one. I'm sorry, this is basic. This is just introductory to the game. So it doesn't add any bonus points to defeat this guy. It's still an eight. Before you attack, recharge a card. So before I do any, or before I act, before I do anything, I have to put a card back in my deck. I'm going to put the potion of vision because if you take a look at the ability, what it lets me do. It lets me banish this card and choose a character in my location to automatically succeed at a non-combat perception check. We're not doing perception. Right here is combat. It says combat. That's the only thing that we're doing. So this card is useless to us. What I'm going to do is drag this card back to my deck, and it's going to go from 10 cards in it to 11. 
After I hit confirm, of course. Oh, it didn't go to 11 because remember, the scenario's ability is that if a monster's power causes you to recharge one or more cards, do so, then draw the same number of cards you recharged. So instead of putting the card back in my deck because it was useless, what it did was let me change that card into another card or change my, that card into the card from the top of my deck. Instead, I got leather armor. Armor lets me deflect damage. Should be straightforward, huh? <laughs> okay, now's the time to roll. Now's the time to roll. What's cool about doing this game in a digital format, whether it be on the iPad or on the computer, is that it will tell me the chance of success that I have at, at any given time. So as I, change, uh, as I change the qualities of what I'm rolling, it will allow me to uh, see my percentage a little bit better. I need to roll an 8 to beat the bandit. We're doing combat. And for... Str and Unless you change what you're rolling by using different cards and stuff, uh, you're going to use strength for combat. So we're rolling a D8. We need to roll an 8, and we have a D8. That means there's only one number that can come up out of all eight sides that, that will be successful, and that's an 8. One out of 8 is 12%, 12.5%. It's just rounding. Uh, so we need, to, we need to influence this number so that we have better chances. What we can do is we can equip our dagger... So instead of rolling our D8 for our combat, the dagger wants us to use our dexterity, which if you remember, it's a D12. And then on top of that, it'll give us a, a D4. So if I equip it, if I reveal it, as it wanted me to show you right here, if I reveal it, we're going to get the D12 and the D4. If I instead want another D4, I can recharge this card by putting in my deck. You see, I'll get a D4 instead. But it's, I'm just going to keep it here. Because right now we have a 62% chance. If you do the highest number on each side, on each die, then you have a 12 here and a 4 on the D4. It's a four-sided die. That's 16. Uh, the chance of us being successful is a 62% chance. We have just over half. Remember, 8 counts as us winning. 8 would be halfway. So 8 counts as us winning. Uh, if I want to increase these numbers even more, I can throw away a Blessing of the Gods. Which will add one die to my check. I believe it will add a 12, a D12, because what we're using is Dexterity. So when it says add one die, it adds whatever quality or whatever skill that we're using. Yeah, it gives me another D12, uh, excuse me, D12 for even more success. Uh, I have a better strategy, but I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, I'm not going to use this now. Yeah, I'll use this now to just demonstrate it. So if we roll this, this card will still be in our hand after the roll, but we have discarded one Blessing of the Gods from our hand. Let's roll. We got pretty good odds here. 22. So the numbers that we ended up with add up to equal 22, which is way higher than 8. We have defeated the henchman. Now, whenever you defeat a henchman or a villain, you have the opportunity to close a location. The point of each of these levels is to close every open location, unless they tell you otherwise. Uh, the point is to close each open location. So for us to close the farmhouse, what we'll have to do is summon and defeat a random monster. It won't be one of the three that's available in this deck. It'll be another one from the reserve of the game. It could actually be any monster uh, within the basic set, because that's what we're doing right now. Let's go ahead and close this bad boy. Okay, so we opened a siren, or we, we drew a siren. That's not good. That's not good, because if you take a look at the siren's card, we defeat it with wisdom. Our wisdom ain't so hot. Our wisdom ain't so hot. We have a D6. Six-sided die. And we need to roll an eight. If we just roll this, we will not succeed. We will not succeed. Let's take a look at the siren card. All damage dealt by the siren is mental damage that may not be reduced. Uh, normally what our leather armor will allow us to do is to reduce combat damage. A, mental damage ain't combat damage. I don't, I don't believe it is. And B, it can't be reduced. If undefeated... Uh, oh, and, and when it comes to damage, you take damage by throwing away cards from your hand. So let's... Oh, and the difference is also how much you need to defeat it by... Subtract uh, whatever you roll subtracted from how much you need to defeat it. So let's say we roll the highest number possible with just this D6. That's a six. 
I said we roll a six. We'll take eight minus six damage or two damage. We'll we'll do that by throwing away two cards from my hand. We get to pick which ones, but we still lose two cards. Our deck is effectively our life. Okay, so like I said, I can either fight this thing or I can not fight this thing. I'm going to choose to evade it because losing right now, losing a, a combat roll right now would not be good. Would not be good. We're going to choose to evade the siren. Now, the siren doesn't go into the deck. It doesn't go back into the location deck because it, that's not where it came from. But in order to close this location, now we have to go through every single card in this deck. If you defeat the henchman or the villain, you're given the opportunity to close the deck or close the location. But because we didn't successfully close it, now we got to go through each one in order to be able to close it again. And that's okay. That's okay. One turn down. We did our first turn, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Next turn. We have the Potion of Healing. The Potion of Healing is a pretty good card. Banish this card and choose a character at your location to suffer one shuffle. One D4 random cards from his discard pile into his deck. So basically, if I get this card and I use it, I'll be able to shuffle a random amount of cards from my discard pile into my deck. And I believe this card would then go in my discard pile. So if I have two Potions of Healing, I could potentially heal forever, which is good. Because remember, this is my life. This deck here represents my life. To get this card, I need to have a roll for intelligence or craft of five. Intelligence is D4. We are one point short. To be honest, I don't think it's worth. You know, it might be worth. It might be worth throwing away a blessing of the gods. Now, let's see. The highest we can roll is an eight. The lowest we can roll is a two. We just need, if nothing comes up. Of one, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be okay. You know, I won't be too sad. Good, we did it. We got the potion of healing, so it's added to our hand. Cool. Now let's see. I, like I said, I can throw away a blessing of the gods to explore again, which is good. You typically want to beat this clock. There's ten cars in each deck. There's three decks. You typically want to beat this clock, not break even. That's not good. This is a short bow. This is a really great weapon for me. For your combat check, reveal this card uh, to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d6. Uh, I know offhand dexterity is is uh, Jade's strength. That's that's her thing. Her, so we want we want to use our dexterity no matter what. So we, we really want to get this card. To obtain this or to acquire it, we need to roll a three. We, we should. There's no reason we shouldn't. Please, please, please. We rolled a three. <laughs> we just made it. And it's added to our hands. Okay. A potion of healing. So there's nothing but blessing of the god cards in our discard pile. Rolling a potion of healing would actually be really good. Those chains up there is for banishing your card. To use the potion of healing, we got to drink it. So it gets banished. Uh, if I get two or more, I'll be happy, you know? We got three. We got all three from our discard pile shuffled back into our deck. This is dope. All right. Turns over. Turns over. The Blast Stone. Banish this card to add 1d4 to any combat check by a character at your location. It's not a bad card. It's trash. <laughs> it's not a good card, really, but for one of our locations here, this card will actually be really helpful. It's just going to be really hard to grab it. We need an intelligence of four. Our intelligence is a four or is a D4. Here we go. And I expect to get it. So the card is banished. Let's see. Our troubadour is glowing. When a card is glowing down here, that basically means this is something that you could use at this moment. For what? You got to read it to find out, but you could use it. Recharge this card to add 1d6 to your non-combat dexterity or charisma check, or discard this card to explore your location. Uh, we can discard to explore again. That's good. That's a good thing. It's a ghoul. To defeat it, we need a combat of 11. This or The ghoul is immune to mental and poison damage. If undefeated, reset your hand and in your turn. So basically, after fighting... There's other stuff you could do. Like, for example, you saw I just played the ally. I was throwing away Blessing of the Gods cards. Uh, if you lose against this guy, if he's undefeated, he gets shuffled back in here. Your hand gets reset. That means however many cards you're supposed to have in your hand is how many you have in your hand. And then the turn's over. You can't do anything. 
So we need to be successful against this gent. Okay, so I just played the short bow, which I said is a really good weapon for us to have. It cares about our dexterity. Our dexterity is high, and it gives us a bonus D6. So we have a D12 and a D6. But we still have less than half of a chance of successfully, successfully rolling to defeat the ghoul. Another ability that Maricel, or Jade in this case, has is that we can, I believe this is called backstab, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Sneak attack, excuse me. <laughs> sneak attack is our ability. What we can do with sneak attack is we can recharge a card in our hand. I believe it'll give us an extra D, I want to say a D12. Not sure. A D6. Okay. That only works if we're the only character at our location. Which is fine because we're the only one playing this level. So naturally, it's, we're going to be the only one. Oh, I'm sorry. I can recharge it to get one bonus D6. Or I can discard it to get a second bonus D6. Typically, I'll only use that ability when I have cards that are more or less useless. Or, or not good for my character. The Burglar sounds like it would be a great card. Recharge this to add 1d10 to your Disable or Stealth check. But you got to remember, we have a d12 plus, six, plus 2 for Disable. So the Burglar is not really a good card. So what I can do is I can discard the Burglar using the Sneak Attack ability. And we get bonus dice. You see how, quick, how quickly our success grew? From 45 all the way to 92. It's all about knowing your skills, what cards are good, what cards are bad, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. We did it. We rolled a 16. So he's defeated. He is defeated. Our turn's over. We can't do anything else. So we'll draw up. We got the Thieves Tools. Reveal this card to add one die to your disable check. See, this card is already better than the Burglar. The Burglar one has to recharge a card. When it says to reveal a card, the card goes back to your hand. That's the same thing that you do uh, with weapons and things like that. You reveal it. You show that it's on you. You equip it. Discard this card to defeat a barrier whose highest difficulty to defeat is low is 11 or lower. So some cards have varying levels of things to acquire or to defeat this one cares that the highest one is 11 we can use it we can discard it to beat it immediately uh after playing this card succeed at a disable eight check to recharge this card instead of discarding it so if we were to use the second ability if we were to discard this for a barrier and we were successful what we can do is then roll again for disable eight and instead of throwing it away we recharge it Disable is once again one of our strong suits. This card is way better than the Burglar. Burglar sounds great. We're, we're, we're better than the Burglar. Potion of gl uh, Glibness. Banish this card to choose a character at your location to automatically succeed at a non-combat diplomacy check. The potions are not bad cards, really. Skeleton. We need an aid to defeat him. Uh, if the check to defeat has either the slashing or piercing trait, the, dis the difficulty to defeat is increased by three. Remember when I said qualities matter? These qualities on the left side, they matter. Oh boy, do they matter. Um, they matter in the sense that some cards actually care about them. So for example, this is a skeleton. It's hard to pierce a skeleton. So, if we were to equip the short bow to fight the skeleton, we instead of 8, we instead need 11 to defeat it. I'll go ahead and show you that now. See how the number changed? It got a little bit harder. It got a little bit harder. And the dagger is piercing as well. So, the dagger will do the same thing. Now, we don't have to equip a weapon to defeat him. It just makes it, it should make it somewhat easier to use a weapon, you know? Uh, we're going to equip the short bow, and I think I'm going to throw the potion of glibness back to my deck. I'm going to recharge it so we get a bonus um, item or a bonus die to roll. We need to beat an 11. I think instead what I should do is discard the potion of glibness. Yeah, we're there now. We made it. Here we go. 16. Not bad. Just this early on, I don't like I don't like losing battles because that means we've wasted a turn. We wasted cards from our deck. It doesn't it does not good it's not a good feel. 
This is a crowbar. Reveal this card to add one die to your non-combat strength check or to check or sorry, your check to defeat a barrier that has the lock or obstacle trait. You may additionally discard this card to add another die. After playing this card, you may succeed at a strength three check to recharge this card instead of discarding it. Okay, so the crowbar works like the thieves tools, but instead of disable, it cares about strength. Naturally. Makes sense, right? A lot of these cards make sense when you think about them. When you read them out loud, you hear yourself talking. They make a little bit more sense. This is a goblin warrior. Uh, he needs a nine to defeat him. So we have to play something or else we will not succeed here. If undefeated, bury a random item or weapon from your discard pile. Why do I always have items or weapons in my discard pile when this ability comes up? Okay, so we either beat him or he goes back into the location deck and we lose uh, an item from here. For the rest of this level. I'll play the short bow. Uh, you see how the dagger is glowing? That means I can also use the dagger here. But the dagger has a second ability. Other than increasing our dice. When playing another weapon. That you haven't already played on this check. You may discard this card. To add one d4. To your combat check. So on top of using the short bow. We can throw the dagger. That's what's happening when we discard it. See? Makes sense. It's not for a lot of points, though. We, in fact, get more points if we use our sneak attack ability to recharge the dagger. It's a lot more useful that way. 87%, that's not bad. It's a little risky, but that's not bad. Let's do it. We just made it. We just made it. Doing hot. Doing hot, if you ask me. Let's keep it going. We only got three more cards in this location deck. All right, so we have Caltrops. Dexteria 4. Oh, we already have it. We'll have to worry about that. Never mind. Banish this card to evade a monster you encounter whose highest difficulty to defeat is 4 or lower. Banish this card to defeat a monster you encounter whose highest difficulty to defeat is 9 or lower. One thing about the cards is that they don't have to make sense when you use them. So, for example, we could play this against the skeleton who needed a 9. I believe it was a 9, right? It was either a 9 or an 8. I think it was an 8 because we need to get to 11. So we can use the Caltrops against the Skeleton, but the way Caltrops work is they get stuck in your skin. Who cares that it doesn't make sense? <laughs> Who cares? It works. Potion of ga uh, Ghostly Form. To acquire this, we need an Intelligence or Craft of four. That ain't our strong suit. That ain't our strong suit. Here we go. No good. Potions aren't ours. Potion aren't our thing. Sheriff Hemlock. Uh, so this is an ally. We're not fighting this gent. We are acquiring him. We are adding him to our team, to our to our 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 our, our repository of things we can use to be successful. Uh, so we need a charisma or diplomacy of eight. I don't think we've seen charisma yet, have we? No, nah, we have a charisma of six. Could be better. There's no way we can beat this, but we still have to roll. It'll be okay. No hemlock for us. Oh, turns over. Come on. It's a locked passage. So this is a barrier. This card here is a barrier. Remember I said some things have more than one way you can defeat it. So a locked passage is obviously a door here. So there's two ways we can open this. We can disable the door. We can disable the lock. Or we can use our strength to break the door down. And the game is always naturally going to tell us to use our our best way of doing it. The way we have the best chance of doing it. So so for disable, we have a roll success of 58%. If I try and use strength, it's going to bring it to a zero. Because we don't have enough. We, we have nowhere near enough to use our strength to be successful. How about disable? Disable is 50. Oh, that's the one we started with, huh? Let's go to melee. Yeah, we are nowhere near for melee. And then dexterity. Our dexterity is is worse than our disable because disable is a sub skill of dexterity. So in the event that we'll always be, or the event that we can use dexterity or disable, it's always gonna be better for us to use disable. It's always gonna be better for us to use disable. Uh so let's see. If we're gonna use disable, I think we want the thieves tools, right? Yep. So revealing this will add one die to our disable check, but 
because oh the highest difficulty we can't discard it can we no we can't because the highest is 16 even though we're going for disable the highest is 16 okay let's go ahead and reveal this bad boy oh yeah we gonna make it we got one die that's a d12 two d12s let's go not even worried Close location, let's do it. Let's see if we can be successful this time. All right, so this time we have to fight Goltus. Last time it was what? I forget what we fought. Oh, we didn't. I evaded it. It was the, the siren. I remember. I hate the siren so much. <laughs> to defeat this, we need a combat of nine. If undefeated, shuffle the top card of the Blessings deck into your location deck. I don't think I mentioned this by name, but the turn counter is the Blessings deck. Basically, this is saying... If we don't succeed against the cultists, we lose a turn. We lose an extra turn and it ends up here in the location deck. So typically we want to. We want to defeat the cultist in one shot. But not defeating the cultist will actually give us the chance to have another blessing in our deck, which is not bad. The losing isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it's better to lose. If you could figure out if you could figure out where it's a good place to lose then losing could be a great thing for you. I'm going to discard the Caltrops. Wait, can I? To evade a monster. No, we could evade him. Oh, actually, we could defeat him, can't we? We can use the Caltrops to defeat the Cultists. Let me bring this back. Uh, let's cancel our sneak attack ability. Instead, let's banish the Caltrops. We'll use it against the Cultists. We don't even have to roll. We don't even have to roll. Dunzo. So this location has been closed. In our next turn, we can move to another location. Like I said, remember, the point of each level is to close all the available locations. So what we're going to do now is move to another one of the two locations. We can either go to the woods or we can go to the waterfront. To be honest, I want to do the woods last because of the closing ability. Whichever closing, whichever location is last, if you defeat the villain, you don't have to do the location or the closing. You don't have to close, which in wisdom or survival is going to be really hard for us. You have to get a D, you have to get a six at wisdom or survival, and our wisdom is a D six. That ain't good. That ain't good. Okay, so we're gonna do the woods last. Let's go to the waterfront. Now the caveat for the waterfront is every when using a weapon every die we lose a point so instead of rolling a d a d12 for 1 to 12 we're rolling a d12 for 0 to 11 that ain't cool <laughs> but let's go to the waterfront all right let's get to it we are ahead we're ahead by one turn i believe it is we have 10 cards left here and 10 cards left in the woods and then we have 21 turns left it's the Goblin Commando. Uh, I can either encounter him or evade him. Before you act, the Goblin deals one red dam or one ranged combat damage to you. So that means before I even do anything, I take one damage. Uh, remember, taking damage means I have to throw away a card. I have to discard a card. So he hits me right away. I think I'm going to discard the Potion of Vision. Uh, banish this card and choose a character at your location to automatically succeed at a non-combat perception check. The only thing I don't like about the potions is how specific they are. But once you can use them, they're actually really good. So taking damage means you discard a card from your hand. And you do not recharge. Okay, so the Goblin Commando. Let's catch him with the short bow. And then we can also... Let's send the leather armor back to our deck. Let's recharge that. 66% chance of success. Remember, here, whenever we add a die, we lose a point for each die. So we have three dice. We're losing three points. I wonder, leather armor, if we instead discard that, will we have better than a 66% chance? An 82% chance is way better. I think what I'm going to do is... Oh, shoot. Leather armor only lets us deflect one point of damage or reduce one point of damage. Or I could banish it. Instead, I think what I'm going to do is send the Thieves tool back to our, our deck. I don't see us losing by more than one point. So the leather armor, we can recharge it. And we'll be all right. Recharging? 
Remember, recharging means we don't really lose life. We will get it. So so instead of discarding a card, we'll put we'll save a point. Damn, we lost by two. Okay. So let's see. This this uh this symbol here. I believe that means I can I can uh what is it? Recharge it? Yeah, I could I could choose to recharge it. Okay. Uh, this says, banish this card to reduce all damage to zero. If you're proficient with light armors, bury it instead. We are, in fact, proficient with light armor. So what we're going to do is instead of banishing it, we're going to bury it. We won't be able to use it for the rest of this level, but we will still have it in our deck for the next level. Now, if I didn't do that, I'd have to discard two cards. We took two points of damage. He has a nine. We rolled a seven. Nine minus seven is two. All right. So we were ahead. <laughs> we were ahead by one turn. Now we are even once again. We've drawn up. Okay, that noise that you heard was letting me know that I am running low on cards. I am running low on cards in my deck. I need to be very careful. Uh, let's see. If you take a look at the blessing deck here, they all each it's it's showing me blessings. The blessings deck is filled with nothing but blessings. Uh, and each blessing has its own ability. Blessing of the gods is a very generic one. It doesn't let me do anything special. Uh, but this one here is blessing of the phrasma. Uh, I can discard. A blessing of Phrasma to add one die to any check. If a player plays a spell in a check, I can discard Blessing of Phrasma to add two dice. Or if Blessing of Phrasma is here and I go to play or discard Blessing of Phrasma, instead I can recharge it. I may treat this card as it is as if it has the same powers as the card on top here. The only catch is I can't recharge it instead of discarding it the tomb of knowledge so i need either intelligence or knowledge and i ain't got those i ain't got those uh let's see reveal this card to add one d6 to any knowledge check recharge it to succeed at your knowledge check we all have a chance and to be honest i don't think i don't think i need the tomb of knowledge that's not knowledge is not within my subset of skills we're just gonna let it let it pass let it pass. Uh, I'm normally what I would do is discard a blessing. I discard a blessing in order to explore again. But remember, I have to fill up my hand at the end of each turn. So it might not be smart here to discard a blessing. We might just have to take it one by one until we can fill our deck back up. This is the Goblin Commando. He's going to deal one point of damage. He's going to deal a whole point of damage. That would have sucked had I used the Blessing of the Gods. Because then I would have discarded one of the Blessing of the Gods, drawn the Goblin Commando, and then lost another card for the turn. On top of not having each point for my dice. Let's throw away the Thieves' Tools. Let's throw away the Thieves' Tools. And now we can fight this man. Let's short bow it up. Uh, and then let's put the crowbar in our deck. I'm 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 scared to throw away cards at this point. It's not. It's really not going to be a good thing to throw away cards. Hang on. Let's not throw away the crowbar. Let's instead recharge a blessing of the gods, so I can see what else is in our deck. I don't remember what all we have. We need to roll. We need to roll a twelve so that when we have minus three, we break a nine. We need to roll a twelve. Damn. This is not good. Okay. So discard four. We have to throw away four cards. We only have three, and that's okay. So our turn ends. We're going to draw up our entire, or most of our entire deck. All right. So we also had a dart in our deck. Uh, for your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d4. If you have failed a combat check with this weapon, you may discard this card to roll the new di or re-roll the dice. Take the new result. So the darts will let us attempt twice if we fail the first time. Which it looks like we're going to need. Looks like we're going to need it. Let's go ahead and use the darts here. Dang, these numbers are so low. These numbers are so low. Let's see. Oh, shoot. We can't. If we lose this, 
We won't have any cards left in our deck, which is fine until we need to draw a card. I'm going to put this back. 50% chance of succeeding here. Can I? Oh, I have to discard that to use it. Okay. Okay, we just broke that one. All right. No more exploring. Not this turn, at least. Can't afford it. The Archer. We need to put this card in our deck. <laughs> at this point, we need to grab cards just so we can put stuff in our deck. Uh, recharge this card to add 1d4 to your ranged combat check, which is great with uh, the bow that we lost earlier. Uh, discard this card to explore your location. Let's see. Let's just go. Ah, oh, we ain't make it. We ain't make it. We ain't make it. It'll be all right. Next turn. Shalelu Andosana. This is a very specific ally. She's actually really dope. Uh, recharge this card to add one d four to your range or to any range combat check. On this, on your turn, reveal this card. Examine the top card of your location deck. Re then recharge this card or discard it to encounter the revealed card. So, it's, like I said, it's actually a really good card for us to have. We need to roll a four or higher to be successful here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so her ability, we either recharge to add points to our ranged combat check, or we can reveal this or re and then recharge it. Like I said, I need to put cards on my deck. Uh, our maximum hand size is five. I'm sorry, our hand size is five, I should say. At the end of each turn, we need to have five cards in our hand. If we have less than five cards, we lose. If we have more than five cards, we have to discard until we have five. Not recharge, we have to discard. So it's best for us to play a card. That will allow us to recharge it. We're going to play Shalelu Andosana. So we can examine the top card. Hellhound. How lovely. He's going to deal one point of damage to us at the end of the next turn. We're going to recharge that so it's in our deck. We have a little bit more life. Now let's see. Evade. My, my power evade or hide. Evade the counter. Encounter. Uh, there's a way for me to check what evade means, right? You can always check the what the game's language means. Let's see. I just got to figure out where it is. I know it's in here somewhere. It's a glossary or something. Give me a second. Oh, never mind. Ignore that. Ignore that. I'm trying to not break the reality of this game. Uh, but I think, I think evade more or less just means put the car back on top. Put the sucker back on top. Okay, so we have to fight the Hellhound here. Uh, add one die to checks to defeat the Hellhound that have the cold trait. So if we were to use the dart and on the left side here it said cold, we would get a bonus point against the Hellhound. But after this, we're going to take one fire damage. We're going to take one fire damage no matter what. So we need to defeat this gent right here. After we fight him at least. If we evade, we don't have to fight him. Uh, let's see. Let's use the dart or let's reveal the dart. We're going to shuffle a card back into our deck. That will keep us alive a little bit longer. We need to do as many points as possible here. Uh, let's shuffle the dagger. So that no matter what, we know that we have a weapon. We have a 50% chance of success right now. Throwing away a blessing of the gods gives us a D12. So we'll need to roll a 14. We'll need to roll a 14. Actually, no, we can't throw away Blessing of the Gods. If we throw away Blessing of the Gods right now and we're successful, this is best case scenario. Darts will come back to our hand. Dart will come back to our hand. He'll deal one damage to us. I have to throw away a card, so I only have two in my hand. We'll draw two, have four in our hand, and lose because we don't have a fifth. We actually cannot. We cannot use Blessing of the Gods right now. I think best case scenario, actually, instead of recharging the dagger, I think what we need to do is discard a card. Because we're, we're going to get the dart back. We're going to take one point. We'll have three. We'll draw two at the end of the turn. Best case scenario is we throw away a card instead of recharging a card. That's best case. We need to roll a 14 here. All right. And then we throw away a card. Let's throw away another blessing. I'm reliant on my weapons. That's one of the things I know about the rogue. The rogue is reliant upon weapons as well as working alone. There are no cards left in our deck. If we lose a card here, we lose for real. Uh, I'm going to 
recharge Salelu. I'm gonna recharge Salelu. Next is a battered chest. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Okay. So we're gonna encounter that. And it's a chest. It's hold it's a barrier. It's holding items inside of it. If we defeat this, we can get new we can get extra items. If we don't defeat it, we can banish it so that we don't face it again. Or we can put it back in the deck. At this point, I think we need to banish it because we're behind now. Now we are behind. Let's see. Uh, we should be successful. These tools, we reveal it. Oh, we got this, fam. There we go. All right, so we roll a D4 to determine how many new items we get. I believe these go to our hand. Four. Perfect. Clap it up, ladies and gentlemen. So we get four items straight to our hand. Again, if there's anything extra in our hand at the end of our turn, we have to throw it away. So we might as well use what we can. The Potion of Healing is going to take cards and put them from our discard pile into our deck. Again, that's what we need right now. Three. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. We got a little bit more life. Okay, so let's play the Blessing of the Gods so that we can explore again. And potentially we can... Re recharge more cards into our deck. Treasure map. Okay. Uh, let's see. If defeated, examine the top card of location. If it's a boon, you can draw it. I believe boons are items, weapons, armor. Items, weapons, armor. I'm pretty sure those are what, boon those are what boons are. If undefeated, I can banish it. Let's use the Thieves tool. Let's see. I have to discard it. And then I'll be able to uh, recharge for it, right? I'll roll for a recharge. So let's roll for the recharge. In worst case scenario, we don't get anything, which is actually not bad because we've we've got a full hand and five cards in our deck. Top cards, the Goblin Commander, who's going to hit us. Who's going to hit us before we, we fight him. So let's keep this stuff right here. Let's not use anything else. We actually caught up. Good. All right, so he's going to hit us. I'm going to throw away the Potion of Hiding. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of the potions. The potions sometimes do what you can already do better. All right, let's take them down. Let's take the sucker down. Let's shuffle some stuff into our hand. The Boots of Elvenkind. Reveal this to add one die to your acrobatics check. Uh, we're most likely not going to need that. Most likely not going to need that. Because acrobatics is so darn high. This might not. This might not go well. Oh, we did fine this time. Good. Good. Uh, all right. All right. It's pinging again. The let us know our life is low. We'll be all right. What's this? The potion. This is the blessing of blessed of Caden Kylie. This does not sound like a god. This sounds like a drunken gent. <laughs> I've actually never seen this card before, to be honest. Goblin Commando. He's going to hit us again. Can we? Can we? Yes, we can block it. Because it's just ranged combat damage. Perfect. Let's recharge this to reduce that. So that instead of losing a card or losing a life, we're all right. Here's some darts. And let's... Oh, we completed an objective. Acquired five allies. When do we, can, when do, we do that? When do we do that? Let's, let's recharge the potion of glibness. We're not using a weapon. I guess we are using a weapon. Why was it this here before? Whatever. Whatever. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Here we go. Damn it. We just lost our whole hand. Oh, we can retry again. Because remember, uh, the way the darts work. We'll retry, but we won't have an opportunity to do it again if we mess up. Good. Okay, so instead of losing our whole hand, we only lost one thing. Not bad. Not bad. All right, let's put Shalalu back in the deck. It's a bandit. Oh, I should have known it was going to be a bandit. It's only one card left. One thing I'm good at is not keeping track of this up here. <laughs> okay, so if we discard it, we'll encounter it again. But I'm sorry, not again right now, but it's pointless because we're just going to do it anyways. All right, before we act, recharge a card. Let's recharge the potion. And then we'll get the boots back. We'll have the dagger. Let's see. 
Actually, actually, do I have another? Oh, my, my bow is in here, isn't it? Yeah, my bow is still here, my short bow. Okay, I was going to say let's recharge the dagger. Maybe I'll get another weapon. Nope, that's not how it works. What we'll do is sneak attack. We'll put the Boots of Elvenkind into our deck. This is so risky. Two-thirds of a chance of success. I'm thinking throwing away the blessing of the gods here. Summon. Oh, if we go to close this, if we beat him, we'll close it. We got to beat another henchman. Another bandit henchman. Let's not. Let's hold that. All right, just one point. It's not bad. I'm throwing away the thieves' tools. We don't need it right now. This isn't going to be good. Shalelu. I mean, we already know what this is. This is the bandit. So what we can do is we're going to recharge Shalelu. Maybe get a better card. Potion of Vision. Okay, here's our dagger. All right, let's throw away the Potion of Vision now. There we go. And we just made it. All those cards that we just made it. Let's close the location. Again, we're going to have to recharge. Let's use our dagger. We'll throw away the boots. What's the other location? The other location, I don't remember the ability. I remember how we close it. I hope we're successful here. This won't be good if we roll less than a 12. All right, good. Good. Oh, we got to throw away a card. Oh, did I just lose? We just lost. <laughs> Because I didn't notice when permanently closed. A lot of places, a lot of locations have an ability for when permanently closed. So once you close it, you have to throw away a card. I think we just lost. We just lost this game. Yeah, because I only have four cards in my head. We just lost. That makes me sad. Man, it took us an hour to lose. <laughs> <laughs> this video was part of a stream. If you want to catch our streams live, make sure you subscribe to AltPlay as well as turn on notifications and follow at the AltPlay on Twitter. That way you can stay up to date on all changes.